Hi everyone, today we are going to discuss about the spoilage of cereal foods. As we know, the microorganisms need temperature, pH, nutrients of food and different other factors for their growth. And cereal is not a different case. We can see many kinds of spoilage occur in the cereal food also. The exterior of the harvested grains retains some of the microorganisms they had while growing plus contamination from soil, insects and other sources. Grains contain bacteria and mold spores. The major source of the bacteria or the molds is the soil which is present on the cereals. While harvesting, if we don't remove uh, the soil properly from the cereals, there are chances for the spoilage occurring in the cereal and their products. Scouring and washing will remove some of the soil from the uh, cereal. As we know, the, the soil will be present on the outer covering of the cereals and hence scouring and washing will be beneficial. Milling and bleaching also will reduce the chances for contamination. Bacteria and wheat flour. There are different kinds of bacteria which are present in wheat flour. Bacillus, coliform bacteria, acromobacter, flavor bacterium, sarsina, and micrococcus, alkali genes, and serratia are some of them. Mold spores like aspergilli, pencilia, alternaria, cladosporium are the molds which is present on cereals. Cornmeal and flour contain several hundreds to thousands of bacteria and molds per gram. So we can't imagine how much bacteria could be there on a cornmeal if it is not properly stored or if, if they are contaminated. Fusarium and pencilis are the dominant molds. Cereals and grains are not be subjected to spoilage as they are not perishable. As we know cereals and grains, we usually store them in a dry area because they are not very, uh, you know, easy to perish. Little moisture will allow the growth of molds and more will allow bacteria and yeast even though they are dry stored products. Cereals and grain meals, as we can see in the picture, which is a contaminated, contaminated corn. The major factors involved in spoilage of stored grains by molds include microbial content, moisture level about 12 to 13 percentage, physical damage and temperature. Aspergillus, Pencilium euchre, Rhizopus and Fusarium are the most common molds. Many of the molds produce mycotoxin. Major health hazard for animals and humans as well as economic loss. If we are not having a quality product, we cannot export it or we cannot sell it and hence the economic loss. That is the significance of spoilage also. Flowers. We are making many kind of food products using flowers like wheat flour, rice flour, jowar, bajra flour, etc. Dry cleaning and washing grains and the milling and sifting of the flour reduces the microbial content. Moisture content less than 13% has been reported to prevent the growth of microbes. If acid forming bacteria are present, there are chances for the acid fermentation like alcoholic fermentation and acetic acid fermentation. As we know, the cereals are a very important factor in alcohol preparation. In certain conditions, bacillus may grow producing lactic acid, gas, alcohol, small amounts of esters and other aromatic compounds. We are eating every day some kind of bread products, right? And bread is also very susceptible for the contamination, especially molds. Some changes caused by microorganisms are desirable for bread making. However, excessive acid fermentation by lactose may result in too much sour. The chief types of microbial spoilage of baked bread have been moldiness, ropiness, and they are termed as mold and rop. Molds are the most common and important spoilage causing agent in bread and most of the bakery products. As the temperature during is high enough to kill all mold, it will reach later on the surface and penetrate after baking. We know we are applying a huge amount of temperature while baking. Even though the molds can penetrate into the bread or the core of the bread if there is any kind of mistakes during the processing. They can come from air during cooling or from handling or wrappers. If the personnel working in the industry is mishandling the product, there are chances for contamination. Or if there is any uh, kind of contaminants in, on the wrappers that also uh, cause this kind of spoilage. Chief molds involved in the spoilage of bread are bread mold, Rhizopus talonifera, which is a very, very important mold present in bread. White cottony mycelium and black spots of sporangia. You can see in the picture like a cotton kind of appearance. 
and uh, these white cottony are mycelium and the green spot pencilium expansum are the common moles found on bread. Mold spoilage is benefited by heavy contamination after baking. Contaminated slicing machine, you know, bread slicing machine. As when we bake the bread, it will come as a loaf and we'll slice it into pieces. And if there is any kind of contaminants on that slicing machine, that will cause a spoilage. Long cooling time, slicing, more air introduced into the loaf, wrapping, as we know, the air is a, uh, you know, an inevitable factor for the growth of microorganisms. A lot of air into the bread also causes spoilage. Wrapping, especially when the bread is warm and wrapped, it causes humidity and again spoilage. Storage in warm and humid place, so improper storage condition also can cause spoilage. Rottenness or rock, you can see in the picture here there is a rock formation. So usually it will be in a yellowish brown color. Ropiness of bread is fairly common in home baked bread because we are not properly keeping the temperature or the storage area. You know, if there is any kind of improper method followed, these are causing these kind of ropiness or raw formation. Ropiness is caused by a mucoid variant of Bacillus subtilis or Bacillus lichenifomus. The, the spores can withstand the high temperature during baking, as I said before. Rock peak condition is a result of capsulation of bacillus. Bacillus is a bacteria. Hydrolyze of proteins in the flour and starch to give sugars and great rock formation. As I said in the first slide, microbes need nutrients. And from the bread itself, they, need, they will get enough amount of nutrients like sugars and proteins and starch. So they will, it will increase the growth of microorganisms if there is any kind of improper storing method or any kind of mistakes while processing. The area of ropiness is yellow to brown in color and soft and sticky to touch. Red bread. You can see in the picture it's very rare occurrence of spoilage in bread. Uh, it's also called bloody red. Bread is uh, striking in appearance but rarely occur. Red color results from the growth of pigmented bacteria like serratia massicens. Moisture content will favor their growth. Monilia cytophilia imparts pink to red color in bread. Red color on the crust goes by geodricum or antiacum. Chalky bread, as the name indicates, there will be an appearance of chalk spots on the bread, which is caused by the yeast-like fungi, endomycosis, fibuligera, and trichosporum. Cakes and bakery, we are very much interested in these kind of products, but still, they also can be susceptible to spoilage. Molds are the chief cause of spoilage. Usually the toppings and fillings are more common or more prone to microbial spoilage. Frostings, fruits are filled with custard, creams, sauces and the like. The fillings of the pastries will support the microbial growth of the pastries. Pasta and macaroni. They get spoiled especially because of the presence of egg. We know pasta and macaroni, they are very much dry before preparation and still uh, they are susceptible to spoilage because they contain egg while processing the pasta we are adding egg into it. In moist macaroni, swelling is caused by Enterobacter colicae. Monilia has been found responsible for the purple coloration, same like in bread. So these are the main spoilage occur in the cereal products as we seen like in flour, bread, different kind of products. Thank you.